Hey, Mad Money fans, check the bottom of your screen for an exclusive offer next. As I often tell investing club members, you shouldn't try to play the earnings game, meaning don't trade stocks on the basis of what you're expecting from the quarterly numbers. It's simply gotten too hard. I think it makes a lot more sense to wait until you see the quarter, pull it apart, and then make a judgment once you know all the facts. Case in point, Micron, the commodity semiconductor maker. Micron reported a very, very good quarter this week, sharply better than expected. They talked about how their inventories are being worked down, said we're at a bottom in the semiconductor cycle. But then Micron lowered the boom on us, knowing that their earnings wouldn't turn up anytime soon while their cash flow would be terrible for the next six to nine months. The morning after the quarter, we interviewed uh, Micron's CEO, Sanjay Marocho, on Squawk on the Street, and he was abject about the outlook. I badgered him about how he could say that business had, bo- had bottomed, yet at the same time, earnings would be bad. That seemed counterintuitive to me. He was straightforward about his outlook, which was, I thought, tinged by a notion of economic uncertainty. I pressed and said it would be highly unusual to call a bottom and then see your numbers actually come down. He said basically that was his outlook, and that's all there is to it. Now, here's how I look at this. Sanjay knows how to make semiconductors. I wouldn't even know what some of these chips do. And others are so small that I can't imagine how they work. That's okay. Knowing chips is his business. Me? I know stocks. I've been trading Micron since not long after Sanjay co-founded Sandisk in 1988. Here's what I can tell you. When inventories bottom, when the customers have used up the chips, chips in the channel, you cannot wait for Sanjay to tell you to go buy. That is not his job. So when the stock was down yesterday, I knew that once again, here we go. It's the best time to buy Micron. You can't extrapolate the CEO's bearishness to the stock itself. Not at this point in the cycle. It was time to... Bye, bye, bye. Let me give you another example, Nike. Sure, it would have been terrific to buy the stock yesterday and catch today's nearly 7% gain. But that gain's minimal versus where the stocks come from, and most analysts didn't even offer commentary about it yet. For me, that means Nike has more room to run, as the analysts, almost all of whom have incredibly high price targets, take them down and then bull the stock because it, too, had an inventory clearing. That will embolden the analysts to reiterate their buy ratings, maybe take it to an extra special buy, whatever they do. Now, there are plenty of stocks where you don't get a chance to do that much after the report. That's okay. What's not okay is to try to guess the results ahead of time because there's almost never enough information that you can make a clever, smart, or predictable guess that you can invest on. It work like that. Yet all the time, I hear people talking about buying or selling before the quarter. For the most part, I think these people lead you astray. Far better to know the patterns of the stocks and know what they should trade on and know whether the market's first steps might be wrong. There are enough of these stocks around that you don't want to play an ill-fated guessing game of Ernie's roulette. Just wait for the results, wait for the conference call, and figure it out from there. I like to say there's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise try to find it just for you right here on Mad Money. I'm Jim Cramer. See you Monday. Last call starts now. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.